Scott Holmes. And I'm Cisco Garcia. Back again to do the talk that we always say the thing like, why talk to each other if we're not going to record it? Exactly, you know. Uh, you know, that's when <laughs> the greatest material happens when you don't record. So just always record. Exactly. You're going to forget about something and then you're like, oh, damn it. Why didn't I bring that up in the podcast, you know? So anyway, I haven't been on this in a while, but it's, uh, it's good to be back on Old Man Orange. You know, the last episode we did was episode 200. 200? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that online. Yeah, yeah. So cool. we breached the humongous amount because you know the kind of neat thing is you you watch a bunch of other podcasts. You know they start off and they go, but a lot of people don't make it past thirty or past fifty or something like that. So mm-hmm. to get to two hundred, I thought was pretty sweet. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, two hundred big ones. Yeah, man. So yeah, especially for now, we're just talking about some movies we've recently seen and stuff. And uh, one thing I really want to talk to Spencer about is a movie called Nightcrawler, if you haven't seen it yet. Oh, dude, that movie's so good. Dude, I, I finally saw it. I, I know that movie's like, kind of like a year old by now, but yeah. if, I always say, if, like, if me and you didn't see it till right now, a lot of other people didn't see it. Yeah. And that was one of those movies, like, I literally, I just threw it on. I had no idea what Same it was Same here. I, I thought it was like, wait, Nightcrawler? Is this, like, is this a spinoff, like, superhero? X-Men movie? <laughs> X-Men movie? What's going on? Like, that was the first, and I kept making jokes like that, yeah. dude. Like, I wish this was a Nightcrawler X-Men one. Yeah. Because I remember seeing the trailers when it came out in theaters, mm-hmm. and it just didn't look interesting to me. Yeah. It, it, I was just like, whatever. Crime. Boring. You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. That's like, what I, I, too. I Whoever made the trailer, I'm not going to blame this guy too much, but like, he just it didn't sell the movie as good as it what it was. Yeah, like, definitely. Because clearly, I had no idea what that whole movie was about. Yeah, neither did I. And it's just, that concept of like, it's such a sweet idea. Like, I almost like afterwards, I'm like, dude, I know what I want to go do right now. I've got a camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like, can make some money. <laughs> it makes you wish that like, weren't like in like, <laughs> Tuolumne County where it's like... <laughs> Well, there's a meth lab burning down. We almost had, well, we, had an al- <laughs> we had an almost school shooting. We had an almost school shooting. Yeah, it's like nothing huge, but like in LA, it's like every every five minutes. Oh, this guy got killed. Oh, his wife. Oh, this guy's wife killed him. Oh, what's going on? There's a car chase. Oh, the carjacking. Oh, someone got shot. It's like you can make so much money just filming this stuff. And I saw it. I was like, wow, this is like a section of like the entertainment, you know, media media business that no one really talks about the fact they made a movie about it is awesome well what the movie is to break it down short for anybody's wondering it's about jake gyllenhaal he's this guy who gets a camera and all he does he decides to do is go out at nighttime, you know figure out where the police are and start filming stuff and pretty much sell it to a news company Mm -hmm. and as he goes through it he gets you know more and more money he gets better equipment better cars he gets a partner who he treats like crap Mm -hmm. (laughs) and keeps doing it and he's kind of crazy all at the same time yeah, he's a little insane. I, I, you know what he reminds me of is um, the movie has some sort of similarity to Scarface to me. It reminds me of Scarface if Tony Montana hadn't died. Yeah, that actually that has the exact same vibe. I totally agree with you I, on I that. Mean, and it's not, not in the sense of like mafia or anything like that, but in the sense that he's like on his way up, on his way up, he keeps getting more money, better cars, you know, he's getting, he's getting that woman that he finally wants on the news station... He has those people that work for him, and then at the very end of the movie, like, he gets this great story that he ends up setting up, uh, he ends up setting up, like, the capture of a, um, of, like, a, of some uh, convicted murder, or some uh, alleged murderers, and he sees, and he, he's the first one on the scene because he sets up the police getting there to shoot the guys and catch them. And the fact that, like, he's not caught in the scheme, he's, the police try to, like, convict him, but he just lies and gets, gets away with it. And I was, like, I was like, yes, finally a movie where, like, the bad guy wins. I, I, want, I want to see that. <laughs> that that ending just topped it off. Because you're always, it's that thing when you watch a movie and you sort of have an anti-hero or your protagonist is actually a bad guy or so on. Yeah. You know that, like, well, at some point he's either going to get caught, going to get killed, something bad's going to happen. Exactly. And sometimes that's, it's like when you're watching a movie, you sometimes kind of want the thing that it's not going to happen in real life. In real life, maybe they don't get away with it. But sometimes in a movie you're like, just let it go. Let's just see. Yeah, let's just see we, they, all, yeah. they always seem to get killed. They always get seem to be taken out. Yeah. Let it just ride. And that's what I kind of like. It's Because the one thing, it's like, movies sometimes always have to kind of end. Mm-hmm. Like, the bad guy's got to go away. It's got to stop. It's got to do that. When you let it go, 
Mm-hmm. That almost makes it more interesting. It's kind of like in a horror movie. Yep. You let the villain make it out at the very end. Yep. One, one other thing I really liked about the movie is it really pokes fun at the bullshitness of internship programs in America. Because the guy who works for him, like, <laughs> he's just like a scrub, you know. He probably was some kind of, like, you know, gangbanger in L.A. And he had, like, nothing to go in his life. Well, he answers, like, life. a Craigslist call. Yeah, he answers a Craigslist call. He doesn't bring a resume with him. He's a total, like, sleazebag, you know, idiot. Kind of like a loser. But a, but yeah, a nice guy. A nice guy, you know. But anyway, um, the fact is that it, it just... The guy, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal's character, he's, you know... He, he, <laughs> Sorry, he's just like, this guy, what a freaking idiot! Total loser! <laughs> nice guy, you know? You're a nice guy, but he's yeah. an idiot, you know? But the same, at the same, at the same time, Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal, who's his boss, who's, like, running the whole, you know, business, he's paid him, like, what was it, like, ten bucks a day or something like yeah, that to do like, this? paid him, like, so shit. My favorite part, too, is I like always, like, you know, we here at the company... And at first, the guy's kind of like, oh, okay, so there must be multiple of these guys. But yeah. then there's a couple months where he's like, okay, yo, 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 it's you are the only guy here. Yeah. There's no we. He, he, he's just so cunning and, and, like, he knows exactly how to, like, manipulate people and manipulate them to do what he wants. And then, you know, <laughs> then at the very end of the movie, instead of, instead of paying uh, his uh, intern more money because he ends up uh, blackmailing him, he, kill, he kills him. He's like, ah, I don't want to pay him twenty five thousand dollars. I'm gonna let him die and get shot. Whatever, that's fine. <laughs> it just shows like Jake Gyllenhaal's character, but also shows how like unfair like internships are. Like this guy, like he probably made a grand total of what like four hundred bucks or something like that. Well, there's like that, that part that, that I think is hilarious whole, in whole it where he goes, "Now I'm gonna give you a raise. Now how much do you want?" And he goes, "Really? I can ask for?" It? He's like, "You can ask." Okay. So he's like, and he asked for like instead of ten dollars, he asked for like. Thirty dollars, something like that. Yeah, and then he's like, thirty dollars, it is. He's like, if I would have said like one hundred twenty, would you take? He's like, I would have, but it's too yeah. now. <laughs> he's just like, well, <laughs> so like, screw you, screw you. you. <laughs> it's all your bad. You, you said it, not me. <laughs> no, that movie yeah. is one of those ones, and that's why I feel like, even though it's like most movies that came out like you know about a year ago or so, but it totally went under the radar. It, it did, totally yeah, a hidden one. And I think it was due to that trailer didn't make any sense. Like you didn't know what you were watching. I just mm-hmm. thought it was like. I just thought it was like two like guys, the police detectives, something. It's like really, I, I had no idea what I was going into. Mm-hmm. And then when I just threw it on, just like, oh, this looks, it you always know, whatever. Throw it on, something to watch. Yeah. And then I just realized that makes the best movies when you really don't know what the heck you're watching, and you go into it, and then it's like, oh, it's oh, this is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice the guy from Titanic's in it too? Which guy from Titanic? The guy who's like, uh, <laughs> the, come the on, guy Rose, who... tell me about the diamond. Like the the guy who's like the discoverer oh, in yeah, Titanic. Yeah. He, he plays the the other. Media guy, the rival guy. The, oh, the guy that breaks his neck. Right, yeah. I was like, oh my god, that's a Titanic. How, that's, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, he's also in uh, Twister. Isn't that Bill yeah. Paxton? Oh, I don't remember. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Like, yeah, he goes from Twister into that. Like, I've, I haven't I haven't seen him in anything I've, really since that. But it's like... Well, he's in a lot of 90s movies. He's, yeah. He's, got, he's like a big supporting role guy. Mm-hmm. Because he's also in... He's in Tombstone, not... Uh, or is he in the other one? No, he's in Tombstone. Tombstone? Yeah, he's not... I always get kind of confused, because you get Michael Bean, who's in Wyatt Earp, and then you get Bill Paxton, yeah. who's in Tombstone, and then Bill Pullman, I think, is also in Wyatt Earp. It, it, yeah. It, yeah, it's just like, whoever... One of those guys are always in it. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, well, you get President Bill Pullman on Independence Day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, that's a, that's a great movie. You should check out... Um, what's the name of it again? Sorry, uh... Uh, Nightcrawler. Check out Nightcrawler. It's a, it's a really good movie. Um, another topic I want to preach with you, I don't know if you've talked about this yet on any of your podcasts, but I'm going to kind of merge sports with movies for a second. Mm-hmm. And we got to talk about, uh, back. one thing, this is the Back to Future year, of course. Oh, yeah. You know, coming up in uh, we should, yeah, yeah we November 5th. I'm going to have a marathon that day. Did they're actually going to play at the Sonora Theater, which is so bizarre. They're going to play the whole trilogy. i got to go see that then. i got to go check that it's out. On, it's on like the weirdest day. It's like on a Wednesday or something like that. But Oh, see, I want to watch it on November 5th, though. I, I want to watch it, like, that day. day. Yeah. It's on, I want to say it's in October. But I, that blew me away because Sonora never has any of those events. Mm-hmm. If something cool is going to play, they're not going to have it. You yeah. know, they're, they're just going to stick to whatever sells the most. And yeah. none of those, like bonus regal things that they always like advertise to you there you never yeah. get any of that so i was surprised to see that was there but anyway um so that it's coming up and uh one thing that people have been talking a lot about my work and stuff which i think is pretty awesome you know not to jinx them or anything like that explain but where you work at because oh yeah by the way I, I work i work in santa clara i work for the 49ers anyway 
So I'm I, I back in uh, back right now in Sonora, just chilling here with Spencer, but doing this podcast. But I, I I go back and forth a lot. But anyway, so I hear a lot of sports talk. I'm you know I'm there working for a football team, but you know I got a lot of friends there who are fans of baseball. And I'm a fan of baseball too. And anybody you know that uh, in Back Future Two, when they go back to 2015, and the Cubs win the World Series. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, ah, oh, the guy's like, I wish I could put some money on the Cubbies. And, you know, like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the Cubs are, uh, they just won the wild card round. Yeah. So there's, and they're going on to the divisional round. They're, they could actually make it to the World Series for the first time in over 100 years. And you know what? B- Bob Zemeckis may have just predicted the World Series. Well, strange enough, it's a fun thing about <laughs> Back to the Future, too, is yeah. that a lot of those things that seem kind of weird, mm-hmm. a lot of, like, started to happen. I remember, even though this happened kind of a little bit earlier, but remember when we were in high school when they started selling reverse clothing? Like yeah. it was inside out? Like mm-hmm. that that was like that's a start. That was a start. They got the yeah. somebody made the hoverboard, so we got that going. Yeah. So, you know, all those little things, I guess we don't one thing you don't got that's the pizza that, you know, you put in the oven and it turns into a full one. Oh yeah, under the rehydrator. 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. I'm waiting for that. I'm also waiting for an eighties cafe. I'm sure there's one in like oh, there's gotta be Hollywood or somewhere, but I haven't seen one yet. But I'm sure they're around there somewhere. You know. Uh, Probably like a Steel Panther place. Yeah. <laughs> One thing they didn't uh, accurately predict yet is those stupid little kids. I think one of them is Elijah Wood. Where they goes like, you actually use your to- your hands? That's a baby's toy. People are still using their hands to play video games. <laughs> yeah, because even, you know, even with the VR, you still have a controller in your hand. Exactly. You know, but I guess you could say, though, that it is getting kind of closer because you got things like Kinetic, or the Xbox oh, yeah, Kinect, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you got, um, well, you had like the, the iToy, which is more like... A fun thing for a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what the eye toy was. It was perfect for, like, if you, were you going to throw a birthday party for when you're 14 years old? Then the eye toy is there for... You remember that time? It was probably when we were, like... I think we were probably about 14. We were over at Josh Bullock's house, and he had just gotten the eye toy. Yeah, well, I think that was my birthday that he brought it up. Oh, that's right. It was your birthday. That's right. Um, we were all playing the eye toy. We were playing that, like, boxing game, and then, like... They had the, there was the one that where you had to, like, wipe the guys off the wall or something like that. You're supposed to punch the ninjas or something, but I just remember, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. like somebody jumping up their ass just going up and down and <laughs> knocking off the ninjas. Because <laughs> it was like, I can't do it fast enough to shoot your, put your butt in front of the camera and jump up and down. And that's, I mean, that's what the eye toy was. It was, you know, there's always those kind of video games that come out, and they always feel kind of like gimmick games. Like, they're fun for the first couple days you play them, and then you kind of, you know, you put it away and never use it again. Yeah. You know, a game's sort of like that. It's kind of on the verge, because I still go back to it every once in a while, this Guitar Hero, all those Guitar Hero Yeah, the Guitar Heroes, games. I mean, I'll say that they last a little bit like that, but yeah. that's sort of what they were. Because, you know, the first one came out, and it was like, so that was a big deal. And then the second one was even bigger, because now they add all kinds of stuff. But then I remember, as time went on, it was kind of, it died out kind of quickly. And you'd mm-hmm. get a game, and then you'd play it for a weekend, and you'd kind of unlock everything, and you'd be done. Yeah. There would be those people, though, who'd play it for weeks on end. Uh, weeks and weeks on end. And I feel like you're going to go blind after a while, because after you play Guitar Hero for more than 10 minutes, you look at the wall, and it looks like the wall is fun, co- like constantly moving up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything's oh, moving. God, yeah. I haven't played that, though, in a while now. Must have, must it's have been, been a long time since I played Guitar Hero. Must have been at least five or six years since I picked up Guitar Hero. Probably have a guitar sitting around here somewhere. I still got the guitar. I got the original guitar for the first one sitting in my house. Oh, yeah. Well, when's the last time they made a Guitar Hero game or a Rockstar game or any of those games? The last one that came out, um, you could plug a real guitar into it. And I think they're working oh, yeah. on another Guitar Hero. They, strange enough, they're still making them. Mm-hmm. But it's just, yeah, it's like, I don't know anybody who really plays it. I guess RJ plays it every once in a while, but other than yeah. that, though, I don't know that many people that play it. Yeah, I haven't... It, I haven't you know, the fad like kind of died out. Mm-hmm. We were, like, at that perfect time, though, because it was, like, right in high school when it came out. Yeah, it was right then, and it was cool because it was, like, a game with our favorite music in it. And, like, wow, that that's awesome. And nowadays, it seems like you hear, like, that music in, like, ads all the time, and you're like, eh. Well, it was kind of the time period where, where they're, like, they introduced some classic rock to, like, kids, but to us, it was like, dude, that's what we listen to all the time. Yeah, exactly. So it was yeah. just like, you know, every, we were the kind of people like, oh, I put a, put a modern band in there, I want to play this. Exactly. <laughs> but it also, the nice thing about it is it didn't really give you an appreciation for music, because you'd listen to bands that you probably never would listen to if it wasn't for Guitar Hero. No, I, I, that's why I have yeah. to give a lot of credit to Guitar Hero. Yeah, that definitely introduced music to tons of people who would never have checked out certain bands. And I also yeah. this, I learned of a lot of bands from there yeah, that I too. never even knew about. Yeah, me too. It's kind of like the Tony Hawk thing. Tony Hawk is another game where yeah. I was introduced to so many bands because of that. Exactly. 
Yeah. And you could probably even say the original Grand Theft, or like Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice mm-hmm. City, yeah, and San Andreas. Like, I learned of stuff from there, too, that mm-hmm. you might not have known of. Maybe yeah. not as much as the other ones, but still. Yeah, but still enough, yeah. You know what you still need to play, though, is you haven't played Mario Maker yet. Yeah, Mario Maker. I haven't played that yet. I finally saw it in stores. I did a little research on it just to look it up. It looks really cool. I yep. just haven't got into it yet. And the coolest, the part that sold it to me more than anything else is it's the Mario World part. Yeah. You know, being able to make Mario World levels, you know, as many as you want and playing other people's, that right there is cool. That's pretty awesome, yeah. You know, don't go around, the other Mario sections are cool, 3, 1, and the new Super Mario Bros., but just the world part's like, oh, that right there, sold it to me. Now, is it similar in the sense to, like, RPG Maker for the PlayStation? Yeah, but it's so fluid. That's the best part about Mario Maker, okay. where it's the other one, you know, RPG Maker kind of, like, some stuff was great about it, and some stuff was just kind of like, okay. Mm-hmm. Because RPG Maker is one of the ones, like, probably very few people who ever played that game actually made, like, a real RPG and, yeah, like, actually yeah. had it go on and mm-hmm. so on. But this Mario Maker, the cool thing about it is, like, you can make, like, a sweet level in, like, an hour. Okay. And you just use the touch screen and you just kind of tap and you place things there and you move it along. And then you just kind of keep playing it out. And then when you're done, once you feel it's good, you play through it, you beat it. Mm-hmm. If you can beat it in one, you know, try, then you can upload it to the internet. That's really cool. So it's it's just totally sweet. Then you play a bunch of other people's online, and so on. And do people like vote on how belt how well made your level is? Yeah, or... people give you comments and they give you like likes and so on. So nice. And then you can play a mode where you just kind of they just throw up random levels and you play like you know fifteen in a row or so. Okay. So you can the cool thing about that is then you can kind of play people's levels that might not get played normally because they're not like at the top of the chart or something like that. Nice. Do you do they also give you the option of like um deciding what sort of costumes you want Mario to wear like and things like that or... yeah you can have that and then you can with some of the amiibos you can put those down and have different costumes like Sonic or Samus which I, the other thing you can do too is if you don't have those amiibos is you just download somebody else's level that did that and then you can steal that in a oh, sense <laughs> that's a good idea yeah what I want to see of Nintendo <coughs> is kind of like and hopefully they'll probably do this Nintendo's been pretty good about DLC lately mm-hmm. is if they add in like um, Yoshi's Island mm-hmm. and then I think the probably the, the one that would be the next one, the given would be Super Mario Brothers two. Yeah. Just in that style, because they don't have that on there. Yeah. And then the one that I think would be really cool, just for like maybe a fun gimmicky thing, is if you could make Mario Land levels. Mario Land. Yeah. <laughs> just just That's in really that fun, style, yeah. of, you know, one of the best Mario tunes there ever was. Yeah, I love that. I love that game. Good old Game Boy game. I'd like to see. I'd like to see a remake of that game, honestly, for Game Boy. Just you know, same music. Maybe update like update this like a re-record the music. Yeah. Same sort of levels, but I just remember that game. That game just epitomizes for me those long trips when you were a kid, like when you're eight or nine years old. I remember going to Mexico and playing that game a lot. I was like, I was with my family. We were dro- we drove down there and it just took forever to get there. I just remember like playing that game all the time. Like Mario Land was my car game. <laughs> And it's just, it's, that's one of those ones where it's such a simple one, and you almost don't think it would hold up well, mm-hmm. because really, there's very few original Game Boy games that I could honestly go back and play all the way through. Could you go back and play Red and Blue again? Pokemon Red and Blue. You know, I think I could, but it's that sort of thing where, you know, when you got the remakes of them, it's kind of like, do mm-hmm. I? Now, I will say, <clears throat> I do kind of appreciate, like, just, like, the old look to it and the sound and everything like that. I think it's some of the small things that would kind of get you where you're like, oh, yeah, the menu system's not nearly as good and I can't run and to get mm-hmm. the bike out. Take It's those little things like that. Yeah. Other than that, though, it's really, that's one of those games you probably could go back and play and it would yeah. be so bad. Like, I, I like the soundtrack actually on the original one a yeah. little bit more than the remake. It sounds weird. Like, I got both the soundtracks at my house, so I listen to those sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But just something about, like, the original... I, I think it just takes me back to, like, 1999. Like, yeah. To those golden days of, like, Pokemon, fourth grade, fucking N64. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, all, all those good things, and I think that's what really reminds me of. Yeah. Do you know how much those games are worth now? Like, the original Red and Blues? Well, the funny thing is, those games, have, the price never has gone away. It's always the same price for that. You know, mm-hmm. you still are paying $30 used for it, so yeah. more. Brand new, it's like, you can get over, oh, yeah. over $100 for that game. But even the other Pokemon games, like Pokemon's like one of the best values ever. Like you buy it brand new for thirty bucks, it's gonna be thirty dollars yeah, used forever. <laughs> it never yeah. goes down. Yeah. Exactly. But like when I think about other 
Game Boy games. The only ones I can really think about playing again that I know are still good is uh, Link's Awakening. Yeah. That's still a really good one. Mm -hmm. Super Mario Land 1 and 2, both really good. And I said, the Pokemon ones, like, I could see maybe doing that. I don't know. It'd still be a toss-up because I'd go like, well, if I'm going to put this many hours in it, should I just go with the remake? Yeah. What about um, Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons? See, those ones, I just don't, I can never imagine myself actually going back and actually playing through those ones. Yeah. You know, there's some Zelda games that, you know, there's the ones that you know for a fact you'll always be playing over again. Ocarina of Time, mm -hmm. Link to the Past, Zelda 1. Mostly it's always every other one I noticed too. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's some that like, you know, you played and you enjoyed them when you kind of did. Like Oracle of Age and Seasons, when those came out, I enjoyed them. I had a good time. <coughs> but for, to me, they don't hold as well as Link's Awakening. Yeah. Because they just kind of feel like, it's kind of like sort of a little bit the same, with, you know, different environments. And they had kind of that cool twist so you could connect the games together or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, that one I just, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I mean, it's probably been a good five or six years since I played that game too, but I remember it being really good for its time. But was was that a Game Boy Color game or was that a Game Boy Original game? Uh, I, Link, the, uh, uh, Oracle Legends. Oracle Legends, Oracle Legends. They were Color. I, and I got a free download when I bought A Link Between Worlds. Uh huh. When I pre-ordered that, they gave me a free download on my 3DS for, it was either ages or, it was kind of weird. It's like, they gave me one and it was kind of like, why don't you just get both of them? Like, <laughs> Like, does really does that they really want to keep the value of that game? That's yeah, fun and that much. I'll kid you not, I don't even think I've even started up on there. Yeah, I got Link's Awakening on my 3DS, I started up on that one, but mm -hmm. I haven't even touched the ages one. And yeah. sadly enough, it's, it's, there's just some games, it's not like there's anything really wrong with them, but you know, I know for a fact if I had to go back and play a Zelda game right now, that probably won't be one of the first choices. Yeah, at the moment, probably one if I did go back would be Twilight Princess. That's actually probably the one that I might replay again. Yeah. Never actually beat that one. I only I like, got through the third temple and then I just That's that's what like everybody reason. stops about the third temple. And I remember telling people afterwards like, "No, no, no. Once you get past that part yeah. and you just put 10 hours in the game, the game is amazing. You got to kind of put up with that kind of crap at the beginning." But, yeah. And, but I, I remember it getting better. Like it was better by the second temple. Even by the first temple. It was good. I just I think I, I think I got zelda out because I think I was in a phase where I played like five or six Zelda games in a row and beat them all, and then that was like the sixth one. I was like, oh, God. God, well, take a break here. Well, sometimes you get excited. Like, you know a new game's coming out, mm -hmm. so you start playing a bunch of the old ones, but then you don't realize in that process you've just totally burnt yourself out on it. Yeah. You're almost better off not even touching them and just waiting. Like, let that build up till that actual game comes out. Did you um, beat the Majora's Mask for 3DS? Sadly enough, I did. I got to the same place I got to on GameCube, and then oh, I was yeah. kind of like, I got to, the, I finished the third temple, and then I just, I just needed to finish it. I don't know why. I just kind of got. It's one of those games. I, I finally ended up beating it. I beat the game, and I kept telling myself, you know what, Cisco, you could die tomorrow. You have to. You can't have died not 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 because that's like a real important thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those games that's been on my list. Like, it's it's such. I have this, a strange relationship with Majora's Mask. It's Majora's Mask I relate to this. It's that beautiful woman that's a bitch. That you, but you're in love with her. But she's a bitch. Because it's such a hard, a, annoying game. Because it's so hard to remember all the crap and going back and finding all this crap. You don't want to play it again. Once you're done with it, you never want to play it again. But then you look at it again like four months later and you're like, oh, that game was so fun. That game is so fun. Well, there's and really then you're like, cool. no, I can't do it again. No, I'm not going to put myself through that again. There's great elements of that game, but there is, and the nice thing about the 3DS one is they kind of like fixed a lot of the stuff that kind of sucked with it. You can save anywhere now. Mm -hmm, it doesn't. True. You don't have those stupid temporary saves. Because mm -hmm. that was the problem. With, that's why I think I stopped playing it when um, I was playing it through on GameCube. Is that the game would freeze on me, but you could you had to wait till you had to restart the entire day, so you could spend three hours in that game and not have a save. And it's like that's so ballsy playing like that. It's like I, I hate doing that. Exactly. So, the 3DS one, I was like, finally, this is my chance to beat the game, to go on, and then for some reason I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm mostly always great about beating Zelda games. Mostly when Zelda game comes out, I buy it day one, I beat it in that week, boom. Yeah. But that one, I, I played it, played it, played it, and I kind of did an off and on play, and that probably didn't help the situation, and then I, for some reason, as I said, I beat the third temple, and then kind of got there. So it's like, I don't have a ton of it left, but mm -hmm. still just enough to... Yeah. I, I would go back to it if I were you, just, just to get through just it. To, you know? Well, it's, I should do it just to say, because that's one of the only Zeldas out of the main t series that I've never beaten. Yeah. I mean, I've only beaten a handful of them, honestly, but that was the most rewarding. Other than other than the original Legend of Zelda, that was the most rewarding for me to beat. Because I think it's honestly... 
you know, it may not be the hardest game, uh, like, battle-wise or boss-wise, but it's the hardest game to figure shit out. Well, that's so one of those games, complex. if you don't have a strategy guy, it's just like, yeah. good luck, how about you just run around all day trying to figure out what the hell you're yeah, supposed to be doing for some of those, out, like, side man. masks and so on. You know, it's one of those games, that, you know what I really want for that game? I don't think there was, you know, I don't think this is around, but it would be a great thing if they had a game genie for N64 where you could just take off the stupid days... And just play it like it's a straight game with no time involved. That would probably actually be kind of cool. That'd be an interesting thing is if you just had like a, just a different version where there was just no time involved. Yeah. You know? I mean, there, you could still have day and night, but in the same way that Ocarina of Time had day and night. It was night of the third day. Oh, shit, if you don't go back in time now, you're going to lose everything. It's just like... Yeah, and that's... I, I wish that... Like, <clears throat> like, they should have it like where... Link's always in a capsule, so he always has everything. So if you go back in time, you don't have to deposit your rupees. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you know, re-get things you already got. Yeah. I think it's small things like that that are just kind of like a sort of a nuisance. Mm -hmm. And you know, and now that, that would probably be the thing is like I could see beating Majora's Mask and like just the more they do it, but they go back and play that game. It's it's that thing. There's cool, mm -hmm. there's really cool elements in that game, but there is that sort of factor of like, do I want to deal with? You know, like, you know, there's a time period where you put up with crap in video games. Yeah, but now it's like, I remember just trying to put up with that stupid bully. You have to kill that bully. You have to pl you have to go back in the game and beat bosses over and over again. Yeah. You have to beat that bull like three or four times. Yeah. And for one little item to do one little thing, so then you can go off this other tangent and do that tangent and finish that. And then you have to go back and do it again to get the second one. It's just like... <sighs> yeah, things like that. It's like, uh, I always consider that it's like the cheap way to extend the games. Like <laughs> Yeah. Cool concept, great game. I would just like to see a remake where they take away the three day thing, or maybe I mean I know it's a, the plot of the story because the moon's coming it's down. Kind of but, like, yeah, but, it's like... but do something where I don't know, just 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 do something where you don't have to worry about that so much because it's it gets annoying, you know. Well, maybe extend it, maybe have more temples or something, you know, something that makes it a little more rewarding. I guess. Yeah. Now, if you had to go back and play a Zelda game in the next couple months, what would you play? If you had to go back, if you know, I like, jeez, like, putting up with Zelda. Oh. <laughs> no, but if you won't, what, you know, if you're going to play Zelda in the next couple months, what would you probably be playing? You know, I probably wouldn't go back to it, but what I would do is I'd go back, I would go play the one that came out uh, for the Wii. That I, uh, uh, Skyward Sword? Yeah, Skyward Sword. I never actually played that one. Dude, a, lot, so. a lot of people passed up on that game. Yeah. And it's, I was one of my favorite Zelda games I think I've ever played. I was so impressed with it. I had such a great time. Mm -hmm. To me, what I loved about it so much is I felt like I was playing Zelda almost over again for the first time. Interesting. Because the only thing that's really in there that you know is Link and Zelda. Everything else is different. They changed that... the villages, they changed everything. Yeah, because you know how, like, you know, most Zeldas are all kind of the same thing. You know, Zelda 1, that kind of format, they pretty much just used it over and over again. It's kind of like Zelda 1, Zelda 3, Zelda Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess. They're all sort of the same game. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they add things to it and things change around. But, you know, you're going to go to the Fire Temple. You're going to go to the Water Temple. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Yeah. You're going to see these characters. You're going to go to Kakariko Village. So on. You know, where this one had none of that in there. Because mm -hmm. it was supposed to take place way beforehand. You're flying around on your bird. You've got all kinds of different things to do. I mean, obviously, yeah, there's fire and there's water and there's so on. But yeah. they, were, they were so different. They didn't feel like that same kind of style. And I think that's what made it so cool. But it was one of those kind of games that sort of, I think what really swept it under the rug for a lot of people was because it came out right around um, when the Elder Scrolls came out. Um, the one with the sky in it. Because there's two sky games. Uh -oh. There's Skyward Sword and then there's... Um, why am I drawing a blank on that name? Hmm. Um, was it for the PlayStation? Or yeah, it was. You know that game that's pretty much like the second most popular game out there after Call of Duty, um, Elder Scrolls, Sky, Skyrim, Skyrim. Yeah, yeah, that game. So, yeah, and the funny thing about that's like, I love Fallout, and I know it's the same company that makes that, but something about Skyrim, and maybe I just have like these weird things. It's like, because I remember that, like everyone was talking about Skyrim, 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 Skyrim. And it was yeah. like, dude, Skyward Sword. He was like, yeah, don't want to play Skyward Sword, Skyrim. So yeah. it kind of made me like, nah, I don't want to play that game. Yeah. yeah. Like, but then I remember telling Dunning that day, I was like, you know, there's something about it. It's like, as much as I love Fallout, I just don't care to play Skyrim. And he's like, I think it's that thing. It's like, you like sci-fi, but you don't care for fantasy that much. I'm like, exactly. That probably makes a lot of sense right there. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It's like, 
Uh, let, me, let me relate it to this. When you watch Lord of the Rings, I enjoy Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. It's a good series. I, I mean, but I'm not so much... I'm not going to go out and read the books. I'm not that into it. You know, mm -hmm. they're too intense for me. And I'm, and I'm, dear God, I'm not going to go and get into Game of Thrones. But I know people are obsessed with that show. Like, yeah, you got to watch Game of Thrones, you got to watch Game of Thrones. I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't have time to watch it that. It just I'm not boring into, to me. Just... I'm not into knights and cavalry and fighting stuff. If I want to do that, I'm going to watch like Gladiator. Or I'm going to watch Lord of the Rings again. Those are the ones I like. That. Other yeah, than that, it's just not my thing. There's you know? good ones out there. And it's sort of like that thing like, if somebody's going to be wielding a sword, can you make it a ninja or a samurai? I don't know what it yeah. is. Like, that, to me, will sell it more. Like I, I don't want to see also... also or a, a lightsaber. Yeah, a lightsaber. <laughs> you want a lightsaber yeah. in their hand. Yeah. With, with the exception of things like Star Wars and, and fantasy, things like that, for most war movies, I just like... I like things that are based in reality. That's why I love World War II movies. It's something that actually happened. Or something that or something that could happen in, like, a, maybe, maybe like a more futuristic war movie or something that, like... It has some, it has some sort of set of reality. For some reason, that's what I like in movies. Like I, I, I know people are gonna be like, "What?" Yeah. But like, but let me say this: Independence Day. Okay, that that's a bad. That, that sounds bad, but, but it's a great movie. It could happen. Yeah. Aliens could have invaded. It could happen more so than you know, knights and wildebeest and not, not wildebeest, knights and knights uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and zombies. The white the white zombies. Some as like the, the the frozen water, like frozen zombies from the north, whatever they call from Game of Thrones. Well, well plus the Game of Thrones, like when you hear other people talk about yeah. it, it just sounds like you guys are waiting for stuff that's going to take forever to happen. Why would I want to do that to myself? That just sounds like torture. Yeah. Like there's going to be a dragon. There's going to be a dragon. I think they've shared it by now, but like yeah. at this point, like I, I heard that for so many years, it was like. And they keep if I wanted to off. see a dragon, yeah. I'd watch Dragonheart. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that everyone says they keep killing off characters in the show, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. I want to follow a character. I want him to die in the next episode. That, that's, yeah. not inter that's not inter interesting to me. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's one of those ones, and I already know because I'm not really the biggest fan of TV in general. Like, mm -hmm, me too. Like the, its format. I mean, there's shows I like, but it's it just where where other people think TV is so amazing nowadays. I'm still like, you know, I like movies. Yeah. Movies are straight to the point. They edit out all the crap that doesn't need to be there, and uh -huh. their production value is better. I'm, the only really TV shows that I really enjoy are cartoons. Well, yeah. yeah. That's mostly how I feel, too. Yeah. It's like, I love... Now, animation, I think, works better on TV because you can do mm -hmm. more episodes and so on. And it's fun, you know? It's, yeah. It's interesting. But, yeah, um, it's... Yeah. It's something about fantasy. I don't know what it is. I'm just... Not my thing. Yeah, and it's like... It's not like I don't like fantasy because, you know, there's certain things like... As I say, I enjoy Lord of the Rings. Lord of the yeah. Rings almost reminds me like... When I look at things like Skyrim or, you know, there's other, what's the, the Witcher and things like that that are mm -hmm. after those other games. Yeah. I kind of feel like, could you at least throw a Lord of the Rings, like, thing over? Like, I, I, I like that. I, I get, I could go into that. Like, I could play yeah. that Lord of the Rings game, the <coughs> Middle Earth one. Like, that sounds kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like things like Labyrinth. You know, there's yeah. a fantasy thing I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, another, speaking of fantasy movies that um, I really enjoy that I've been just re-watching again because I think it's honestly one of my favorite fantasy stories of all time that's king kong oh yeah i, I guess if you kind of consider that fantasy that's almost like a mix it's, of fantasy, it's fantasy and reality sci -fi. that's it's fantasy and reality because you got the reality set of like the people in the 30s and you know film and movie but then you've got this fantasy of, of a giant ape and now which version are you watching stuff. well this is what i'm doing so about two years ago i watched the original then i watched the 70s and then i watched the uh 2005 one mm -hmm. now i'm going back now i'm doing it the other way now I'm, i just watched 2005 one like a week ago I hated it when it came out. I love it now. That movie, it's amazing. I think that movie's a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece, and, and for it, some, I don't know what it was like. Why there was like animosity against it, like when it there came. was, yeah, some sort of animosity. But I just, I, I now I look yeah. at it I'm like it's the same thing with Lord of the Rings. I think I was just so pissed that I was like, everyone's all obsessed with this fucking Peter Jackson. Who gives a shit about Peter Jackson? But then I watched it again. I'm like, you know what? He actually knew what he's doing. And he's not out there trying to be like you know a super celebrity director. He just wants to make good movies. Yeah, he just makes a great. Movie. And I think it's just yeah. that thing at the time. Like man, he just makes long movies, blah blah. You almost kind of yeah. fall in this like hate train. But then you realize like, dude, no, that yeah. King Kong's amazing, and the original yeah. one, fantastic too. So the seventies yeah. one, I just watched that today. I only watched that one once, and yeah. it was a long time ago. So as I said, the two thousand five one's a masterpiece. I watched the seventies one, and it's so dated and so overly seventies cheesy that. I just I feel like you're gonna laugh at it today, because it's just the acting's terrible. Other than uh, Jeff Bridges, who's awesome. Yeah. I, I mean Jessica Lange's terrible in that movie. The other guy, the bad guy's terrible in that movie. The special effects. The I mean I like I like the idea of having somebody in a monkey suit. That's cool, but they could have done it better, and the, and they could have used blue screen uh, or green screen a lot better in that movie. 
They just, they just didn't do a very good job. And Dino De, De Laurentiis is the producer of that. Like, Charles obviously wanted to make this well, huge blockbuster 70s movie. Well, here's the thing you can't learn about Dino De Laurentiis. He makes some great movies. He produces ones like Conan, and mm-hmm. he did... He did Hannibal. Yeah, he, and he did Flash Gordon. Yeah. But he's also kind of like a very like cheapskate producer, too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he makes... A, like, he kind of the guy who makes a lot of B-movies, and then every once in a while gets this almost like... He makes a B-movie, but it happens to be a sweet... You know, yeah. fan, like something like Conan or Hannibal or, or you know, did he do Hannibal or Descendants of the Lambs? He did Hannibal. He did Hannibal. Okay, he, yeah, that's yeah. right. He did Hannibal. Yeah, but um, that seventies one is just kind of cheese ball, honestly. I, I I don't recommend it unless unless you grew up on it, unless you're you know that you're you're you know fifty something, yeah, you know, and you watched it when you were a kid. I don't recommend it. Well, because I remember watching it as a kid and just kind of like because I saw it after I saw at least because I saw the original when I was really young mm-hmm. I almost want to say I saw the 70s one maybe around the same time Peter Jackson one came out and I was kind of like eh, that's what, it's, it's just kind of you know it's hard to be impressed yeah. well they, they tried to make it like super 70s by making it about the oil crisis and they want to go to the island to get oil I'm like wow I can totally tell <laughs> like you can this movie scream 70s and that's not, not necessarily a bad thing but the fact that it just hasn't aged very well. And does well. that one actually take place in the 70s and everything, too? Yep, yep, yep. yep. I mean, at least I, I have to get it credit there. At least that, that makes it kind of different. But Yeah, they did something new, but they just didn't do it enough. <laughs> Sometimes enough different doesn't always yeah. pan out still. And the fact that the only other, uh, other than the natives, the only other bad creatures or whatever on the island is a fucking, like, giant snake that's really cheesy and is in the movie for, that's like, right. I don't even have a T-Rex, seconds. and that's, like... There's no dinosaurs, and that just ruined it. It's like, what? That's, like, the best no part of King Kong. Yeah. <laughs> there's a T-Rex in there. Yeah. And, and other dinosaurs, too. And the original, of course, is... You know, the original is amazing. The yeah. original, they, they did everything. And the special right, effects and... are so good in that original. That's yeah. the thing, it's just... You watch older movies, you know, 70-year-old movies, it's... The special effects almost are more mind-blowing then mm-hmm. than they are nowadays. Because you just, like, the work that was put into them. Yeah. Because like in the seventies ones, like that's what the special effects sometimes kind of like you know excluding Star Wars and things like that. But yeah. like you know, I was just kind of like, yeah, I'll try something. But you know, mm-hmm. and maybe it's the you know the color kind of ruined it at that period and so on too, where you know black and white you can kind of get away with a little bit more. But yeah, oh, this, yeah, that original one's great. Yeah, the original I need to pull that. I have that one on DVD. I don't have the Peter Jackson one though. That's something I need to get. Yeah, I want to. I want to buy the super like edition of that Peter Jackson one, like Blu Ray. I just have the five dollar cheap DVD, but I really want to watch the extended cut of that and watch the. Is there an extended cut too? I think there is, and I want to watch all the special features and everything like that because he really knew what he was doing. He had good actors. He had a good scene. He added more. The, the thing I think I like about it the most is he added even more monsters. Yeah. He because there's King Kong, T Rex. There's the T Rexes. There's the, uh, the, the brontosaurus with, uh, brontosaurus with the uh, velociraptors. Uh-huh. And then there's the bugs, too. Yeah. And the bugs, I think, are the creepiest part of that whole movie. Oh, yeah. And that, it's hard for me to watch that part, even, but it's so fascinating at the same time. Because mm-hmm. it's just like those slug things. Oh, God. Like, just so creepy, you know? No, yeah. That, that is a fantastic movie that I, I appreciate ten times more to this day and age. And as well as ones, like, you throw it on, it's hard to turn it off. Like, no, yeah. You exactly. just almost feel like you have to sit there and watch the whole thing. It's just yeah. that good. And it sucks you in. Something else that he did in that movie that was awesome is the very end. He kept very close to the original movie, which I liked. And the fact that um, the orchestrations in the very end of the film are uh, very similar, if not exactly the same, to the original orchestrations when they are... Uh, Dancing around King Kong when they have like the Broadway show set up, you know, mm-hmm. they have like that dun 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 like the old King Kong soundtrack from like the thirties. That's like they revamped that into the new movie. I'm like, that's really cool. It, it, it's I like it's that little touches like that. Yeah. Now, what do you think about the new uh, King Kong versus Godzilla movie that's in the works? I don't. Know, I didn't hear about this. You didn't what? hear about no, this? No, no, no. What's what's going on? Apparently, with this? they're they're gonna do a King Kong versus Godzilla one. I don't know if they're going off the same style as that oh, new wait, American one. I did one. hear about this. I think I heard about it like six months ago. Yeah, they've been talking about it for yeah. Is Peter while. Jackson doing it? I don't think so. Okay. But um, <coughs> yeah, I'm not too sure it's based off. Did you see that Godzilla came out a year ago or two years ago, whatever it was? Yeah, it did. I think so. I think it did. The American one, like it, it, it was a pretty good movie. It just if it just had more Godzilla in it, I think that's like kind of the downfall to oh, it. Okay. Yeah. It had a little bit too much melodrama in it, and just mm-hmm. kind of like you know motion and characters and people. And you're like, dude, you know, the only person I want to see that has feelings is Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to see anybody else. Like, you know, you could make a Godzilla movie where like it just focused on him the whole time. Like one classic Godzilla movie that I loved as a kid was Godzilla on Monster Island because that one started mm-hmm. out. And there was almost, like, no people in it. It was just, like, Godzilla and his son on an island with a bunch of monsters. And yeah. I think there was people in it eventually. 
But for the most part, it was like, it was like what you wanted. Because that was my only thing. Is like, you know, you watch those Godzilla movies. Now, I bought a bunch of them like in the Japanese versions. Yeah. Which makes the biggest difference. Because when you can watch them subtitled, they're pretty good. You know, you yeah. lose the corniness from like the dubbing. Mm-hmm. But as a kid, you're just like, why are these people talking? Let's just get the Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla or King yeah. of Hedra or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. Rodan, Mothra, something. Yeah. So that's just like kind of what you want to see. It's like, that's why I thought Pacific Rim was a great example. Yes. That one had a copious amount of action throughout the whole thing. Excellent movie, Pacific Rim. I hope they make a sequel to that. I know. They're working on it. And for some people are so negative about that movie for some reason. I don't know. It's just, it's, we live in this age, where, and I've mentioned it before on the show, where it's just, people are just, it's just almost like people are just hypercritical. cynical. Very hypocritical. Yeah, for no reason at all. But I think because there's just nothing to complain about. There's no, like, poverty there's no, like, oh, man, we have this, like, horrible war going on. People might go, like, well, yeah, there's some little conflicts. I'm like, yeah, but they're not, like, affecting the, you know, the inner U.S. Mm-hmm. So people, like, instead, they get all this fantastic material in a sense. I mean, you've got to be so grateful. You get so much movies and games and books and entertainment. you got, there's not, there's not enough time to, like, enjoy even, like, a tenth of it. There's just that much exactly. of it out there. Yeah. So people that's, like, since there's nothing else to complain about... We'll just complain about things that are already good. Yeah. And it, uh, to me, I guess it just bothers me. Because I, I just kind of want people like, this day and age, it takes a lot for me to like, you know, not like a movie. If I don't like a movie, I sometimes just say like, it just wasn't made for me. Mm-hmm. That's how I kind of feel. It's like, somebody else probably enjoys it, you know? And, 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 and got I mean, an audience somewhere probably. And then every yeah. once in a while, there, there is some, mostly if a movie, if I don't really like it, it's mostly because it like strikes me on some like, personal level like a wreck it ralph or something where it's just like yeah it just really like it was just like they personally it personally offends us but yeah. that r- rarely happens but you know that fucking hard candy movie offended me I yeah like like movie. ones like that there's just yeah those are the ones that like i really hate and it's not like they're made bad or anything like that wreck it ralph is just more like it sucked you in with this half an hour of like mm-hmm. oh my god there's street fighter characters and you're sonic and there's all this cool stuff in this video it's all oh, it's a great world and then they just give you an hour of just totally crappy movie yeah where you're sitting there with your arms crossed I mean, I almost never been like that person. Like, I'm gonna walk out here and get my money back. I literally felt like that was the one movie where I was like, "Anyway, you wanted to do that." I just felt like Mickey Mouse just came by and just like mugged me in the street. <laughs> Speaking of Mickey Mouse, <laughs> I can, oh, I can wrap the up. show up. Okay, well, make sure to check out oldmanoins.com. And until then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Francisco Garcia, and we will see you some other time. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located. If you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast. Hello, I'm Dr. Norman Trousers. P, on the other hand, is River Zambezi. Hello. We host the Castle Earth Podcast a ramshackle little comedy show found on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and all your favourite podcast directories. And www.cassamurth.com Yeah, and there too. We were interrupting what you were listening to With permission. Yeah, we're not that clever. To invite you to When you finished Come and take a listen to our show. If you like laughing Yeah, if you like a laugh, come laugh with us. Should we warn them? We should probably say something. Some of our content None of which is suitable for children May offend. Would you suck a stunt cock? <laughs> There's lots of dicks in this if I, if I If I was on my own, that Japanese fucking milky tit sex doll, I would probably buy one. I'm going to stick my finger on my bum. You know, bollocks of that. Just go on the internet and actually get that bird to fucking... Put a finger up her herself bum. off. Well, yeah. This is Angel Barrow Wax. Maybe... Maybe I'm a bit prudish, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe I felt a bit guilty when the cat walks in on me having a wank. I don't know. <laughs> in my fucking day, we had to work 27 hours a day. That's before we got up. Do you like my leather? I thought you were just sweaty. No. If you had nine knobs, 
I guarantee you wouldn't be sat here doing this show. And and it was a bit of a weird experience to basically be sat around a fucking picnic while she's naked in a bath. I'd buy him a picture of Kylie Minogue's cock. What? Really? She um had a cunt like a Wookiee's armpit. You forgot to turn the beat machine. F*** what a cunt. So, as long as that kind of language doesn't offend you, we'd love to welcome you into the fold. Yes, we would. So join us on the Castle Earth podcast. Thanks for listening. Will you unlock this cage now? Shut up. <laughs>